All right. Hi, everyone. We're on. We're on. Wow, that was fast. No intro or anything. No intro or anything. The week that was in Philadelphia sports. A week one. Flip the script. Thank um, you, all 12 people who watched the episode last we, week. Did we meet our goal? I don't even know. I think remember. our goal was 12, so this week our goal will be 13. I thought that's what it was last was week. Was it? I, I thought know. we had 11 and our goal was 12. Okay, well. Either way. Disappointing. Riding high. Um. Well, who do you want to start with? Let's start with the Philadelphia Wings, who had a bye this week, and they remain 5-3 and three, and in second place, set to make a playoff appearance if they can maintain it. For the second half of the season, looking good. We will be there to see you in March. Um, looking forward to it. We'll just uh, move on to the Seoul. The AFL is still not around. The XFL is on now uh, for any of you that watched the opening weekend. I like the kickoff format where they're like both lined up like 10 yards apart. or They're like close together and the ball has to go past 20 and then they just go on and it's like boom. And they just destroy each other. That's pretty fun. There's to watch. a few rules that are different that are intriguing, but overall, overall, I couldn't watch more than five minutes of any of the games. I watched more than <laughs> five minutes. Pat McAfee was on it, and that's why I probably. I mean, could. ESPN has got the broadcast right, so that's pretty huge. Um, that will help the league. Uh, you know, hopefully, it eventually can sustain. But until Philly gets a team, I don't really care. <laughs> okay then, uh, let's just move on. To the Eagles, you had a lot to say about the Eagles. Uh, well, not so much. We waited, we waited, we waited, and guess what? We decided not to hire an offensive coordinator. And no. If that was the plan all along, then why didn't we just say it? It reeks of, we tried to get this guy, didn't get him, tried to get this guy, didn't get him, tried to get this guy, didn't get him, and then just told everybody that we're smarter than you, and we're going to have a passing game coordinator and a run game coordinator, and Doug Peterson will call the plays, and Deuce Staley will be the assistant coach. So, wow. I don't know what to say. Other than they didn't get the guys that they wanted, so they turned it into this, and they're going to operate without an offensive coordinator, which I guess I read somewhere is what San Francisco does. So be it. But if that was really your plan all along, then you should have done it four weeks ago, which makes all of us realize that wasn't your plan all along. It's just what ended up happening. Are you going to watch the All or Nothing Amazon Prime? The All or Nothing Amazon Prime. Eight episodes. I'm pondering it, but it's, yes, I probably will watch it. But, man, it's hard to relive why, that like, year. Why didn't it come out during the season? It could have because been, like, it the 24-7 HBO stuff. They could stuff. have done periodically. That would have been better. I would have watched it that way. They would have watched it that way. I don't way. know, man. It's They were 5-7. and seven. They won the last four. A lot of those were ugly. The sad part is you know how it ends. Like, if you did it 24-7, you're building, you're building, you're building. You don't know how it ends. Knowing how this one ends, eh. Uh, with a ridiculous hit on Wentz in the playoffs. Uh, I don't know if I really want to relive a 9-7 and seven season that was painful. I'm sure there's a few behind-the-scene things uh, that'll be interesting, but... Uh, like how Nelson... I saw a preview thing, and Nelson uh, Aguilar was talking crap to Deshaun Jackson, and I was like, you have no room to talk at all. Like, I don't suck. know. I'm debating whether cut. or not... Go play in the XFL. I'm still disappointed the way the season ended, so it's too fresh for me to relive all that. Maybe I'll pick it up in the summer when the new season's about to begin to refresh myself on how sad the last season was. Next, we'll move to... By the, the way, wearing my Malcolm Jenkins Super Bowl jersey today, by the I'm way. I'm wearing an American League jersey. It's not a Padres jersey. We found this at Burlington Coat Factory for $10. Speaking of Malcolm Jenkins, the Eagles need to restructure his contact, so he's back. And don't mess it up like they did Brian Buck. This is also a Phillies hat. It's an all spring hat. Um, anyways, Flyers, uh, we won 3 nothing against the Red Wings. That should be expected. Flyers on the road, a necessary win against the Red Wings, 3-0. You are garbage. A game that you have to win, and they did win. They come home. It's an odd week for the Flyers. They win one that they absolutely It's This is the most Flyers week of all time. They get pasted 5 nothing by a lowly Devils team at home. And uh, they've got four losses, I think, against the worst teams in the NFL or the NHL. NHL. Well, they beat a Red Wings team who has 12 wins. Six or eight wins against the top five or six teams. As we've we've chronicled the last few weeks, they've been doing excellent against the the better teams in the league. Uh, St. Louis, Boston, Washington, Pittsburgh. So the 5 nothing, we were ready to talk about that. And then they just went out and put an unbelievable beat down. Just a, arguably the best team in the NHL. Roddy Chop. 7-2. I mean, it was a 1-1 game. With the yellow jersey. 1-1 Come game. At me. 
three goals in the next in the first five minutes of the second, and then put three more on to go up seven one. So they win seven two. So overall, I think my prediction was four out of six points last week. Yes, it was. They got four out of six points. So I'll take it. Slow Giroux, eight hundredth point. You would love to have gotten at least a point out of the Devils game and swept that with how close everything is. Eight hundred point, four full awesome. time now. On a goal, beautiful shot behind Brian Prop. Also the longest tenured. And Bobby Clark, who's the second one? I'm not sure. Is he fourth now? I think so. Brian Prop, someone else. He passed uh, Bobby Clark, Lindros, and all those other guys. Yeah. Um, Got to be someone old school that we're forgetting. Brian Prop follows me on Instagram, by the way. So, I mean, four out of six points. Everything matters at this point in the season, though. Great win. Still looking for Carter Hart to get back. Excited Ooh, yeah. that Morgan Frost was called up. He won yes! nine, nine out of ten face-offs. That's huge. They were sticking with Drew back over on the wing. The center experiment is over. He will be playing the wing in the foreseeable future, which is good for him. 800 points. Amazing. Love to see him stick around long enough to get 1,000. He is the longest tenured athlete in Philadelphia, and thus a legend. Where is points? I can't find points. Oh, well. Okay, hockey reference. Well, that was games played. Yeah, games played is in there. I think it might be uh, Bill Barber, actually. Could be. Yeah, I would guess. I would up? venture to say it's Bill Barber because... All-time points Clark leader. Clark leads in points. Wait. 1,210. Yeah, I would say it's Bill Barber. Did you Google all-time points yeah. leaders for players? That's what came up? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would venture to say it's Bill Barber. Yeah, it is. Okay. Anyways. Bill Barber yeah. second, and then... And then props third, Drew's fourth. How many does prop have? 849. All right, so that's catchable. How many did Barber have? I have no idea. All right. Clark was like 1,000... Yeah, 12,016 or something. That's ridiculous. So anyways, he could he could easily pass... And get into third place. Nicholas Abe Kubel, by the way, had a Gordie Howe hat trick. And this is just my Nicholas Abe Kubel appreciation time. Um, he's been with the team for a little bit now. He was with the Phantoms for a long time when I used to play like NHL, the old NHL video games, like the last two years when I'd play as the Phantoms, he would always be one of the best players. Um, Nicholas Abe Kubel, shout out to him. Uh, Sean Couturier with two goals on the night. Connecting continues. Just destroying everything. And did you know that Kevin Hayes used to ref? Kevin Hayes used to ref what? Hockey. Ooh, exciting. I'm surprised you haven't heard that. That's an inside joke. Um, anyways, on to the... the, the Real horror. quickly, here we go. Bobby Clark, 1210. Bill Barber, 883. Brian Prop 849. Claude Giroux, 800. It's realistic if he stays healthy, he would pass Barber next year and move into second place. Uh, Possible. Very, Very possible. possible. So that's exciting for G. Uh, Sixers time. Sixers time. Well, let's talk about the disaster that was. Everything that's been Well, we on. finished last week with the horrid game against Boston, and then we followed that into this week with the disastrous game against the Heat, in which we were down four at halftime and somehow lost by 31 points. God, it was horrible. Charles Jimmy, Barkley called us out. Jimmy league. Butler had to run wild all over us, and nobody did anything to stop it. Pathetic. We made a trade. Who cares? Pathetic. Then we moved on to Milwaukee, played a little bit better, but still had no answers. Uh, I believe this is the game that Embiid shot 6 for 26. Once again, we have player discussions, quote-unquote player meetings. Nothing gets resolved. Two more horrible losses on the road that ended a four-game road trip with a loss to also Boston and Atlanta at the front end of it, which is a joke. Fire Brett Brown. Came home, beat the Grizzlies. Obviously, we're at home. One of the best records, two losses, I believe. Beat the Grizzlies by 12, although the game was a lot closer than it seemed. It was. And then just tonight, they beat the Bulls. Uh, We're trailing in the third quarter at one point, beat the Bulls by seven. Again, at home. Burke and Korkmaz has gone off the last two games. Uh... Ferkin is my favorite player. Embiid played a little bit better tonight uh, than he had been playing. Don't know how much the injury is continuing to bother him, but... uh, Does it matter? Well, yeah, because, I mean, we're still going to... Continuing on, we had a little technical difficulty there. Uh, It is important that Embiid come back, because ultimately I feel like we will rise or fall uh, with his performance in the playoff. Um, The week ahead, just one game against the Clippers, TNT. 
Love to win it going into the break there. 36 and 16. We're 33 and 21. It's going to be a dogfight. Uh, I'd like to go into the All-Star break with the win. And then we're off for nine days while Embiid and Simmons go off to the All-Star game in Chicago. Flyers play the Panthers, Islanders, Panthers, and Lightning. They have to go down to Florida for those last two games. Big points in terms of standings, especially with the Panthers and Islanders. So we'll see how they do there. I tough... venture to say they get... Four out of the eight. It's a tough back-to-back -back right at the start. they got to win that Panthers game at home because then they're at the Islanders, at the Panthers, at the Lightning. Uh, the Panthers are roughly where we are. Lightning are very good. We played good against them. Uh, with eight points on the line, I'm going to predict we get five. I said four, so we'll see who's right. Um, moving on now to the Philadelphia Union. Their season draws ever closer. They announced their jerseys. Have you seen them? Yes, I have. They're okay. I mean, they're not great. They're they're better than last year's. The last year's was like a B stripe. Now this one is just it's it's okay. I don't mind it. Um, not much news other than little stuff, I guess. Opening day is not that far away because we're going to the home opener on March fourteenth, and I believe they play before that a week before. They have a lot of preseason games. Um, they play preseason. What's games. opening day? March what? I have no idea. I believe it's maybe the seventh or eighth. Let me look. But okay, preseason. Less than a month. I think it's the eighth against LAFC. Uh, uh, yes, that home, that's away. Yeah. And then we will be at the home opener against San Jose. Yes. Okay. Cool. On to the Phillies now. Lots to say about the Phillies, and it was Truck Day. Really? Uh, yeah. Lots Today to was say. the fanatic moved all the no, stuff down. No, it was yesterday. No. Yeah. No, Wait, the fanatic no. always does most. Truck of the heavy day was lifting. Friday. Yeah. The truck arrived there today. The hot dog launcher was on there. And was the fanatic driving? No, he should have been. But Ricky Patalico and another guy that covers the Phillies drove all the way down there. Wow, which was cool. Spring um, training is almost upon. It's like three days away now. Pitchers and catchers report, which means Pavetta, Velasquez, Eflin. But, uh, they'll all be reporting for another mediocre Pavetta season. Pavetta has worked on the. Space between his hips and his ribs, and that's going to give if him more firepower. I recall he said he stopped listening to the pitching coach. Smart from last move. Year, and then he Smart did. Move. He did better. So that's concerning. Uh, we also signed Tommy Hunter oh, back. Why? why? Um, for free? Yeah. For all the money he took from the last deal? Yeah. I hope he's playing for free. Yeah, they did. Collected money for two years for nothing. Hopefully he's just on a spring training invite, not a guaranteed roster spot. Here's an interesting question. There are reports floating around. Obviously, Mookie Betts went to the Dodgers today. It officially happened after all that happened this week. That was like, it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And it happened. It happened. Um, Kenta Maeda, I think, went to the Twins. Uh, that deal ended up getting... Sh the Twins backed out of that deal, and they ended up redoing it, I think. Yeah, they did. It got a, so. it went official today, though. Um, what do you Boston like? Boston and the Dodgers. Who cares? Well, okay. We have to get two. Alec Bohm, who signed this ball, and Spencer Howard signed this ball. No, I do not I want to want trade to see either for. Of them go. I don't want to trade for Chris Bryant. To be successful, you have to have like four minutes. You have to have homegrown talent, and we're gonna have to ride with those two. Don't do it, Clintac. If we're gonna spend big money on anybody else at this point, we're gonna have to make a mid-season trade for a pitcher. Uh, I don't think we're gonna let go of those two pieces because Bryant, you're you're only guaranteed for having for two years. And then he's going to want a massive deal. And we already have a massive deal with Harper. And we still need pitching. Plus, we still got to pay Real Muto. So, don't uh, do it. I don't see that trade happening. I'd be more inclined to go after Rockies, uh, Arenado. But still, he's up for grabs, it. too. But he has a no trade clause that would have to be, uh, or he has an opt out clause. I think after 21, it would have to be modified. Because his deal's for like $236 million. But we should have more Phillies talk coming up soon uh, as the season begins and spring training. And we will chronicle how our starting pitchers are not very good. Right now we go on to when we show stuff off. Because some of you like to spit and some of you don't. Um, really? People said they liked it? I think one person said they liked it. And what and did then, everyone else say? And then no one else said anything because 12 people watch our videos. So one person liked. That's 100% approval rating. What I'm going to show you today is my Mike Schmidt night from May 26, 1990. Autographed. I was not at Mike Schmidt night, but I bought this program later that summer as a 14-year-old and went to a game and was able to meet 
Mike Schmidt afterwards. He was broadcasting for Prism at the time. <laughs> met him in the parking lot with my mom. Also met the Philly Fanatic that night. Again, another. You never it never gets tiring meeting the Philly Fanatic. But met Mike Schmidt that night. Got his autograph. Uh, one of the highlights of my youth was meeting him. And uh, obviously he was one of my favorite athletes. And Charles Barkley as well. We'll go over something with Charles on another night. But Mike Schmidt signed this. Signature, a little bit different than the bat. Obviously, when he's signing something professionally, it takes a little bit more time. This one, though, I was there. It means the world to me. Mike Schmidt signed that for me, and I still have it. Thirty years, Almost 30 years later, I still have it, and it's one of my favorite pieces of memorabilia. Mike Schmidt. Okay, for me, I'm going to show off this hat. I have to get closer to the camera. Here's your phone. Ah, sorry. Um, this hat has a lot of signatures on it. We got it over the years. Uh... 2011 to 2013, 2012, yep. actually. 13, I think. 13, 13, actually, yeah, Ryan Howard. Okay, so on this hat, it's very dusty. I didn't dust it, I'm sorry. Uh, you can see Cole Hamels is on there, Ryan Howard's on there, Hunter Pence is on there, Shane Victorino, Chase Ellie, and Jimmy Rollins. This is a pretty cool hat. I don't think anyone else has a hat with all these people on them, so if you can see it, there are the signatures on the brim. Um... What size is this hat? I don't even know. I don't know. It was a fitted hat, and we had it him is. sign it. So It's a good pickup. And then I'll also talk about the other thing here, because why not? Uh, this is a Jimmy Rollins signed mini helmet 2008 World Series. Um, I got him to sign this in his car after a Diamondbacks game. Uh, he was in the parking lot. Me and my friend chased after him. I have a lot of s memories of... S memories? What are those? S memories uh. of... Waiting in the parking Smelly lot. Smelly memories. For four, yeah, it smelled there. At it's the true. It was stadium. by the, it's by the the uh, railroad tracks and some, it some trash. It smells over there by the Diamondbacks, uh, stadium. Which they've subsequently gated off and made impossible. So yeah, like the place I met Chase Ellie. Boo Diamondbacks. Boo Diamondbacks. Boo Cardinals. We're from Arizona. We don't like them. Uh, Coyotes, Suns. You're fine. Whatever. Um. Yeah, got anything else to say? Villanova, we might jump into them a little bit. They're squeaking oh, along. They're going to get idea. into the tournament. They but, lost yesterday. You know, they're loose, yeah, but they're good enough to get in the tournament. We'll roll with them when they get in the tournament. Do they have enough to win it all? Probably oh, not, wow. but I think they can make a run at the Sweet 16. I hope so. That would be nice, but that's basically it. There's nothing else. All to right, say. 13 views. 13, See you next week. 13. I have to edit this all together now, three clips. That's going to be fun.